May I now request Mr. Ramesh Chand, member Niti Aayog, to give his keynote address. Organizer of this event, panelists, and my dear uh, participants, uh, I want to thank uh, Raj Chengapaji for inviting me to this uh, conclave. And uh, I attended previous uh, three sessions, and uh, I just want to say that I learnt a lot about uh, Tamil Nadu. I hope uh, this session also will uh, throw a lot of useful uh, information for you. Uh, friends, uh, uh, you will agree with me that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, Tamil Nadu uh, is well known for uh, progress and growth of industry in this state. But what is lesser known about Tamil Nadu is its achievement in agriculture which I find are also quite impressive, but they are less highlighted. So uh, I'm happy that uh, the organizer uh, included agriculture as uh, one of the theme for uh, discussion in this uh, conclave. I feel that uh, in Indian state and for India, if we talk about development, growth, welfare, the discussion remains incomplete if we do not include agriculture. Why I say so, I will give you simply three reasons. One is that agriculture is so important for inclusive growth that those states which ignored agriculture and had highest per capita income in the country for many, many years, they have not impressive record in reducing poverty and improving socioeconomic indicators. But then you look at the states which don't have very high per capita income but which paid attention to agriculture and where agriculture growth was uh, uh, robust, their record in reducing poverty and improving socio-economic welfare is much, much better. There's no time, but I will only say that you compare Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu, the message will come out clearly that Maharashtra, with so much growth of industry, was able to reduce poverty only from 40% in 71 to 17, 18% in 11, 12. But look at Tamil Nadu, because it was early adopter of green revolution technology, it was able to bring down poverty to one-fifth, from 50% in 11, 12 to 10%. And I give credit that the state was having very balanced approach toward its development, both agriculture as well as industry and services, not uh, uh, ignoring agriculture and paying attention to this uh, uh, services and uh, uh, industry uh, 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 alone. The second reason is that uh, these days biggest challenge for uh, India and also most of other country is employment. The way industry is going ahead, they are adopting capital intensive approach and labor displa displacing approach in most of the cases. That is the nature of technology also. We talk about robotic, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, etc. So you just find. I did a study and published a paper sometime back, it is in EPW, that in rural India after 2004-05, growth of industry was 14% per year, industrial output. But growth rate in employment was only 0.5%. So you can imagine that if we are not paying attention to agriculture uh, or if we are not paying attention to job, how we will take people out of agriculture where the number of uh, laborer is excessive and how we will provide employment to rising workforce. Even in case of Tamil Nadu, though uh, we have so much appreciation for the industrialization which is happening here, Please check the unemployment rate in Tamil Nadu from PLFS data. Last three years, annual data is available. In all the years, unemployment rate in Tamil Nadu is higher than what is the All India average of uh, unemployment. There are so many issues behind it that we are not able to create the kind of employment which people want because the younger generation are getting educated. They don't want to work in agriculture. These issues are there. The third issue for paying attention to agriculture is uh, sustainability. No time, I hope during discussion uh, we will take it up. So in the subsequent uh, 10 minutes or so, I would uh, like to share with you first brief 
achievement of Tamil Nadu agriculture since adoption of Green Revolution and lessons from that and then some takeaway for way forward for agriculture sector in uh, Tamil Nadu. Well, Tamil Nadu was among early adopter of uh, Green Revolutions and many of the states which were early adopter of Green Revolution, if you look at their present growth in agriculture, it is not impressive. It is even less than 2%. In Punjab, it is 1.4%. But in case of Tamil Nadu, even if you look at the last 10 years, the growth rate of agriculture is 5% and India average is only 3.5%. So this is unique about Tamil Nadu that, uh, that, that despite being early adopter of green revolution and even uh, increasing productivity of rice, uh, uh, using, uh, making use of green revolution technology, the state did not stop there and it, its agriculture has been uh, growing at a very robust growth, particularly during the last 20 years. So after uh, 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 making use of green revolution technologies, I think the potential of that first wave was uh, uh, exhausted in the state in early 90s. Tamil Nadu agriculture witnessed a very serious deceleration in agriculture for almost 10 years, around, started around uh, 93, 94, and it went up to 2003 or 4. But after that, it bounced back in a very big way. And the two main instruments for that bouncing back was, one was a very large shift toward horticulture crop between 2002-03 and 11-12. In Tamil Nadu, 10% of area is put under horticulture. All India average is only 5.2%. So that was the kind of diversification which happened between 2002-03 and 11-12. Uh, After that, there is no increase in area share of horticulture. That is the second wave to which I will come. So this after Green Revolution and after that deceleration, this first wave of growth started around 2003-04 and continued up to 11-12. It was mainly driven by high value crops, fruit and vegetable, and dairy. The output of milk in this state doubled in 10 years between 2001 and 2012, 11. So that was the kind of growth, that dairy growth and high value crop growth, which gave Tamil Nadu very respectable growth in agriculture from 2002-03 up to 11-12. Uh, After that, the area under fruit and vegetable, in fact, declined. Some other kind of diversification started happening. The state start uh, experiencing uh, water stress. They, this, is, this is a long story, but I'm just giving you the uh, brief uh, messages. And what happened in the second wave is that first wave of diversification was high value crops and dairy. So we talk about green revolution, but what is the achievement of white revolution is much bigger than what you find achievement of green revolution if we identify green revolution with cereals. So another revolution which country witnessed was of blue revolution. I will talk about that also a little bit. So after 11-12, what happened that horticulture growth in the state came down significantly and milk production also came down significantly, uh, growth in milk production also came down significantly. But then two new sources emerged. One source is, if you look at the growth of meat sector, buffalo meat, particularly in Tamil Nadu, in, in seven, eight years, the growth rate was 20% every year. There are issues related to this, that Tamil Nadu was slaughtering one lakh buffalo every year, and as a result, number of fellows in Tamil Nadu declined from 12 lakh to 2 lakh. So it is not sustainable. There is other aspect of it which we need to uh, discuss, but it provided big push to growth rate of agriculture sector. The second aspect, which is very, very amazing and which is again unique to Tamil Nadu is that it diversified toward orphan crop, toward neglected crop, Area under millet in Tamil Nadu after 11-12 increased by 300%. Area under pulses increased by 60%. Area under maize also witnessed big increase. Area under jowar also witnessed big increase. Area share of rice, of course, uh, 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 declined. 
so what is surprising is that these crops are considered low productive crop all those kind of things but in case of tamil nadu even through diversification in these or toward these orphan crops uh, pulses uh, millers the state is able to harness 5.2 percent annual growth in agriculture between 2012 and 2021 which again i will say is among the top uh, three states that is the uh, kind of growth which has happened and that helped the country in many ways that if you are producing more rice and wheat today you are adding to the burden of stocks but if you are producing more pulses you are helping the country in addressing food shortage uh, substituting uh, some of the uh, imports so this was the second uh, wave of uh, diversification which uh, helped uh, state of uh, tamil nadu as a result of these two wave of diversification today if you look at aggregate crop productivity in tamil nadu you will find it is 50% more than what is all india average if you look at labor productivity in agriculture in tamil nadu it is 60 percent higher than what is the uh, all india average and then there are other issues that 70 percent income of farmer household in tamil nadu comes not from crop and livestock it is coming from non farm sources so so that uh, uh, non farm sector is also uh, very very important so given this background what is my take away what comes to my minds that what are those area on which tamil nadu should focus in the coming 10 years i will quickly list uh, seven eight areas one is i feel there is a scope for further strengthening and developing value chain in millers there are many entrepreneur in tamil nadu who made high value product out of millers uh, millet uh, cookies uh, milk uh, balls milk energy uh, millet energy balls so i feel that those and agri uh, 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 entrepreneur agri tech firms played a rodable role in giving good price for millet to the farmer and that's why area under millet increased uh, so much uh, in this uh, state so we need to strengthen and further develop this because there is very big demand among the elite section of indian society for millet waste product second is that in the case of pulses there is always a big variation in what is the price in the harvest season and what is price in the lean periods so if we can help the farmers to stock their pulses produce during the harvest time and sell it after 4 5 months i think simply their income can be increased by 40 50% so we need to do something linkage with fpo fpo extending uh, helping hand to farmer to keep their uh, stock giving them some finance or working out some arrangement with the private sector for sale of pulses in the leaner uh, months third is the milk sector which gave very good results during uh, ten year uh, ending with 2012 but which then decelerated the growth rate of milk sector can be easily doubled in 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 this uh, states in the next uh, 10 years the way state has uh, gone for cross breed cattle and all those between 2001 and 10 i feel that that story need to be brought back because there is lot of scope i have yield data what was the milk yield of cow buffalo and i find that there is a stock for second white revolution in in tamil nadu that 11 to 12 it was missing before that it was there for 10 years but now there is a there is a scope for this second wave of white revolution uh, in uh, in uh, uh, tamil nadu thirdly the highest growth among agriculture activity in the country is seen in the case of fishery last 5 year we are uh, seeing more than 10% growth in fishery but growth rate of fishery in tamil nadu is not even half of what is the growth rate of the country it is only 3.8% state has a long uh, coastal line but the growth rate in fishery is much much less but i also want to share with you that there are lot of central government program to give help to the fishermen and fishery sector pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana huge money is there so we need to make use of those kind of uh, windows for uh, uh, growth and accelerating growth rate in fishery sector in this state the fifth uh, factor is uh, lateral flow of uh, technology from advanced country 
we have some experience that uh, that some of the technology which is coming you see we should not take unnecessarily pride that desi technology indigenous technology let's not forget that beet revolution came from mexico rice revolution came from iri philippines similar kind of horticulture revolution are possible provided we make use of technology which is available in israel which is available in netherland which is available even uh, in some denmark those kind of things this state has two israeli center of excellence i think this state should also uh, uh, get in touch with the neither government to have at least two three center of dutch center of excellence they are also doing very good job in the state of uh, uh, uttar pradesh and they bring lot of uh, lot of uh, uh, technology with that and that is needed for precision farming that is also needed for consolidating achievement of uh, horticulture sector and also despite so much area under horticulture i was surprised to find that the state doesn't have even one food park so i think that is again which we can bring to the attention of uh, honorable uh, chief minister then the next factor is that crop intensity in the state is very very low we take two crops only on 26% area most of the time the land is just barren without even anything productive the the other dimension related to this is that fallow land is so much in this state that net zone area is 46 lakh and fallow land is 30 lakh hectare even if we divert half of the fallow land in this state we can increase production and income of the farmer by 33% that is the kind of scope that why on one hand we are talking of land is not available in this state we are a high population density on the other hand in last 10 year fallow land have increased by 5% in this state so fallow land is a big scope if not crop we can think of uh, uh, agroforestry kind of uh, activities uh, uh, activities uh, there and i think some area in this state also need to be put under uh, Uh, organic uh, farming but not going whole hog at least 10 15% area for organic farming uh, kind of thing uh, irrigation is a big issue for this state this is the state where area under irrigation is declining not only in percent term even in absolute term 10 years back 58% area had irrigation now only 55% so we need to do something for water harvesting water conservation water efficient uses uh, drip irrigation uh, etc uh, etc but there is no time i will just come to the concluding uh, statement that future agriculture is to be driven by knowledge non agriculture technology and private capital the state must facilitate participation of agri tech firm in agriculture in a big way this will put agriculture on a higher growth trajectory and open new venue for raising income of the farmer thank you very much